The state of Louisiana is finally undergoing uh, some reforms when it comes to its criminal justice system. And there's one sheriff who has been extremely outspoken against these reforms. Sheriff Steve Pratter of uh, Parish uh, Caddo Parish, Louisiana. Now, um, he's concerned because uh, nonviolent offenders could potentially get released early and um, you know, they would also be uh, they wouldn't be prosecuted as harshly under these reforms. And the reason why the sheriff's not happy about this is, well, these nonviolent offenders provide slave labor for us. And so what are we gonna do if we can't have that slave labor in our state? If you don't believe me, just take a listen. Place out there, I don't want uh, state prisoners, okay? They are a necessary evil to keep the doors open that we keep a few or keep some out there. And that's the ones that you can work. That's the ones that can pick up trash, the work release programs. But guess what? Those are the ones that they're releasing. In addition to the in addition to the bad ones, and I call these bad, in addition to them, they're releasing some good ones that we use every day to to wash cars, to change oil in our cars, to cook in the kitchen, to do all that where we save money. Well, they're gonna let them out. Oh, it's unbelievable. He's, first of all, he's complaining about releasing the good ones. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Okay, so there's two ways of interpreting uh, this guy's statements about the good ones, okay? Mm -hmm. One is, um, well, they're good guys and they should be out of prison, but they wash my car and they're my, and I use them to be my, you know, cooks and stuff, so I don't Slave want labor, them. slave labor. Right. Right? Okay. I, I, I enjoy. Continuing to imprison nonviolent offenders for lengthy periods of time because they provide slave labor for me. The other thing is not much better. He might mean the good ones as in the ones who will do what they're told to do, okay? The ones that do my work. The other ones, they're not broken. We haven't broken them in what sufficiently. What a disgusting individual. What a dis We're talking about people's lives, right? We're talking about people who already have their lives destroyed because they were convicted of a felony, a nonviolent conviction, okay? And oftentimes it has to do with drugs, something that, you know, wasn't there a video recently released of like the Dolphins coach snorting lines of coke? Does he deserve to be in prison? Should we throw him in prison and make him I, do slave labor? Oh, but that's a white dude in power who's got some money, so we don't want to we don't want to mess with him. But there's a bunch of people who have no power whatsoever, and it's totally fine to keep them behind bars, destroy their lives, and force them to do slave labor, so this this sheriff could live his cushy little life. It's disgusting. Uh, but Anna, who's gonna wash my car and uh, and cook my? Uh, well, are you expecting? Wash your own goddamn car. Are you How expecting about that? me to do my own labor? Now remember, the blacks are lazy. But who's going to do all my work for me if I can't unjustly imprison people who aren't violent? We imprison more people than any other country in the world, while simultaneously complaining, uh, boasting about being the the land of the free. No, we love throwing people in prison for nonviolent offenses. Okay, whether it's uh, drugs or you know, in some cases, if a woman is unlucky enough to uh, miscarry or have a stillborn in a red state like uh, Mississippi, we'll throw them in prison uh, if they've ever had any history of drug use. I mean, there's all sorts of disgusting stuff that happens in this country, and it's because there is a profit motive. Okay, there is a huge profit motive by private prison industries and by you know people like this sheriff. It's easy, it's easy to go after nonviolent offenders rather than go after the real criminals. And it's easy to get that free slave labor. Look, there's great documentary of the 13th, but there's many other things that have been written about this. And right now there are more African Americans in prison than there were black males in slavery at its height. There's a line of history that goes through and and the 13th does a great job. It's a documentary on Netflix that you should watch uh, that it explains once this slavery was ended, they had to figure out a different way to still have free labor and to enslave people and keep them down. And one of the excuses they found was drugs. Now, we told you the stat many times because it is really illustrative. Um, blacks and whites do drugs at the same rate in America, marijuana specifically. Blacks get arrested at four times the rate. Now, not necessarily for dealing, not necessarily for anything along those possession, okay? Why? 
because local sheriffs need their cars washed and they'd like to have a cook and they'd like to have their oil changed. So they were used to having other people do their work for them because they're lazy racists. So now they think, okay, good, we found a new legal way of enslaving people. Now when they say you wanna let go of the good ones, no, the good ones are the ones that do all my work for me. And then, and then putting black police officers behind him during this press conference, he's so disgusting. He really genuine, like he is bottom of the barrel when it comes to people in America. To, to be boastful about making the good ones do this type of labor, these people have Families, they they might have kids. And by the way, if if the racial angle doesn't matter to you whatsoever, you don't care. Okay, but you're mistaken if you think this doesn't affect everyone. Of course, it disproportionately affects minorities. But the reality is, again, when there's a profit motive, if you're powerless, you could be targeted for this kind of nonsense for a nonviolent drug offense. Help us build independent media. Become a member of the Young Turks. TYTnetwork.com/slash/join.